to Eduardo La Replace playing Airlines Manager Tycoon. Today I'll be sharing a experiment that I'm planning to do to see what types of flights are the best. Meaning, which types of flights will actually give you the most profit of your hub. So today I'll be buying three new hubs, pretty similar size in cities, and then one hub will be doing long haul flights only, one hub will be doing medium flight haul only, and the last one will only be doing short haul flights only. Now I'm going to pick North America because that's what I'm familiar with. So the hubs I'm planning to buy are, now let's use the expansion mode now. Now the three cities I'm planning to buy is one Toronto, whoops, Lester Pier, uh, Mr. B. Pearson. Information on YYZ and purchase as a hub. Great, so that's one hub done. The other hub I was planning to buy is Chicago. The O'Hare Airport. And the last one I was planning to buy is Seattle in Washington. The Seattle Tacoma, right there, Seattle Tacoma hub. So obviously with a bunch of money, um, the best thing to do is obviously experiment on random flights. <laughs> so now I will be going to the Finder app now. Which is great to see, just perfect to find the correct flights that I need. So I think for Seattle, I want to do my long haul flights. So long haul flights, I think the round trip should be around 20 to 24 hours. And there, so one round trip per day. And I'll select my aircraft. Now I am planning to use the Dreamliner 787. And sure, let's do Wuhan. Because, you know, it's super popular now. Or un in unpopular. Okay, perfect. So that's my Seattle long haul flights. Now, the next one I will do is my Toronto flights. And for Toronto, I think I want to do my medium haul there. And my favorite airplane is the A. 321 Airbus Neo right there and then my I think these so for medium haul flights I would consider these um, 10 to 12 hour round trip flights and let's see where this is oh dear there's not not that much okay so a lot of the west coast ones and a little bit of the central America. So my next one would be Chicago with my short haul flights. And I'd say anything between four to six hours would be sh pretty short haul. I can get four round trips a day. Okay, that's five. 
So now time to buy the planes. Uh, of course this will take some delivery time so I will come back and try it out when we are done. Okay, so you'll see I'll be buying some some planes here, so I'll just probably fast forward. Yeah, we'll wait for the delivery, and we'll see what the structural profits are for both uh, both planes. All right, so my airplanes are now ready for delivery, which is perfect. All right, all right. Um, so now I completed my deliveries already. I got all my airplanes. So now it's time to schedule in the flights. So what I actually did was I actually included all the cost of the hub and included all the cost of the route within an Excel sheet. And what that does would be that, you know, we'd actually see how much everything costs and how it helps with uh, profit. So right now, I'll just go ahead and schedule in all the flights first. So it does seem like I have quite a bit of first class and business, actually. So I might have to change my... Yeah, I should probably change my airplane configurations. Alright guys, um, I stopped recording my flight configurations because it just took way too long. Okay, so now I pretty much have a balanced, you know, business class economy, stuff like that. So hopefully it's a little, it looks a little better now in terms of flight scheduling. So now it's time to put in the flight schedules. Dipped into the negatives a little bit, but you know that's in general acceptable. And I've used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven planes. So in the other routes, I think I should not use more than eleven planes as well. Okay. So Seattle's my long haul flight to Wuhan. Plane's uh, sitting there for a bit now, and we'll check out the network management. So as you can see, my yeah, Seattle, Chicago, and Toronto. So obviously, the kilometer of routes is different, uh, but essentially, what I have done now is let the let the planes run, see what the results are in a day or two. Obviously we want to check within a day to make sure, let's see what the profit is there. So right now we're starting at ground zero, you know, five routes each in each hub. You know, I bought 30 planes just to get the maximum discount. Calculated and 
tabulated all the route costs and only scheduled 11 planes to fill in most of the demand of the five routes. If there were more demand, I'd leave it. If there's less demand, I'd not go down to negative. So that's the test here. And we'll see what the profit comes out to and what the return on investments are. All right, now it's been a day, full day now, since our long, medium, short haul flight hub experiment. Uh, Seattle is our long haul, Toronto is our medium haul, and our Chicago airport is our short haul. So as you can tell, uh, obviously with the ticket prices of long hauls, the long haul flights have do have more revenue. Uh, 22 million versus 12 million versus 4 million for short haul. Now, of course, this all depends, you know, yes, you will have more revenue, but obviously the initial cost is a lot more. So now doing some data. So doing some data analysis, you can see it here that so for Chicago, you can see that I have used the Bombardier Q400 short haul planes and 30 planes cost. I did buy 30 planes just to get the maximum discount on planes, um, but obviously I scaled it back to only the 11 cost. Um, how many, how much would 11 planes cost at that point? Uh, our medium haul used A321 NEO and our Seattle used the Dreamliner 7879. Uh, the hub cost is pretty much approximately the same since these are both, uh, all three of these are big cities in North America. Now, as you can see, the route cost is actually, it actually increases as we go um, from short to long. So our fifth route was actually 32 million at Seattle, but for the short haul, there's only 19 million. Now, 30 planes, of course, the cost is significantly more expensive as we move uh, from short to long uh, 30 planes will cost six billion dollars and whereas the short haul flights cost less than one billion dollars and Medium haul flights are somewhere in the middle Now the revenue as we saw from the screenshot earlier now we plug it into the revenue here now the cost Excluding the hub cost just because that is pretty much the same cost as you know most major cities hubs are costing approximately the same so now, if we exclude the hub cost, now the return on investment, which was surprising to me, you actually get more bang for your buck from your sh uh, Chicago short haul flights, which just one day you get 1.3% back. And for medium long haul, it's a little less and it's less than 1% return. Now, if we include the hub cost, which was interesting, um, it reverses. Now, long haul is more profitable than short haul and medium haul. So it really depends on how you want to do it. I don't think there is a right way or a wrong way. Now, keep in mind that there are subsidies for the first like 25, 30 routes of each hub. So getting to the next hub is technically the biggest obstacle for you. Um, so you can make a quick, you know, quick buck um, by doing short haul flights or you can you know throw in a lot of money and make a lot of money back on your long haul flights um, obviously this doesn't include any maintenance costs and it doesn't include any um, yeah it doesn't include any maintenance costs which I imagine long haul flights will have more maintenance costs built into them So welcome back. Uh, this is actually a second part result of my long, medium, short haul flight experiment. So I realized that if I just kept all three hubs using 11 flights, it didn't really make sense. So what I should have done is use up mostly most of the demand on all five uh, routes in each of the hubs. So Seattle and Chicago, the sh long and short haul flights, they actually in Seattle, I increased the planes to 15, and Chicago, I increased the planes to 11. Uh, sorry, to 13. Uh, Toronto, I kept at 11. So as you can see, the profits did go up from 29 million to 12 million to 5 million in Chicago. So again, here are the results. I'll go back to the results page. So this was the original results with 11 planes on each of the five routes. Noting that Chicago and 
Seattle did not um, use up all their demand on all five flights. So essentially, the cost to buy the routes didn't really make sense because you're buying all the routes but you're not using it all. So the return investments, uh, excluding the hub cost, uh, short haul flights do have a better return on investment. Uh, and then long haul flights the least. But if you do include the cost of the hub, you can see that uh, it reverses. The long haul flights are actually better. Now, if we go down to the revised results where I use 13 planes in the short haul flights and 15 planes in the long haul flights, uh, the rankings don't change. Uh, the return investments for the short and long just increase a little bit, but the rankings are still the same. Uh, excluding the hub cost, short hauls are still better but the long hauls are not far behind. Whereas if you include the cost of the hub, the short haul flights um, are half of what the return investment is in terms of percentage from the median haul, which is in turn half of the long haul flights. So I think conclusion is that it's kind of inconclusive. Um, it really depends if you want to include the cost of the hub or not. I, because the hub is hard to buy in the beginning, it's kind of hard to decide, but no, personally, I, again, I, I just go with medium since it's the happy medium. You're not you know, too short, you're not too long. Too long, you don't really have patience to save up the money to, to buy it and have fun in the game. So personally, I, I would stick with medium, but it really depends on what you want to do. Of course, this doesn't include the maintenance costs. So I think after a month or so, after the planes are flying, I will try again and include the maintenance costs into this and have a part two in the experiment. So again, thanks for watching Eduardo Larder Plays and hopefully this helps you decide or not decide, <laughs> makes you more inconclusive of what you should do. All right, thanks for watching guys.